The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on the second day of December, first trading day of December. Now, I'd spoken about this uh, last week. When, <clears throat> if there is a sell off just before the end of the month, it means that there's a chance that the candle that we're looking at might, in fact, be making some kind of a peak on the letter, whatever it is, of that month, because this following month, you've already started off on a, with a lower high, and that means, yes, you've got the entire month in which to take it out, but it also means <clears throat> there's a chance that you're making some kind of a peak that you need to worry about. But what's so fascinating about this is, look, on the left side, here's the daily. In the middle is the weekly. On the right is the monthly chart. Let me get rid of the 120 minute. We don't need it right now. <clears throat> For the Dow, that's the Dow index. Look at the YM. Yeah, I got to hit the right place. Where did I hit it? All right, let's go over here. That's YM. The continuous contract of the Dow <clears throat> in the futures. Made a high of 28,197 today. That's an all-time high. Hey, wait a minute. But that means December <clears throat> has an all-time high for the futures, but not for the cash. My thinking here is that with the strength that we are still seeing in those two key moving averages, the 9 and the 14 period moving averages in the daily, that there's enough residual strength to say there could be just a nominal new high early on in December in the Dow. And look at the S&P, SPX cash. So the Dow made its high on Wednesday. This one, the futures made the high earlier this morning before the open. Look at the futures. 3.15, in the futures, the cash. And in this case, in both cases, this is, this is almost certainly a peak G and not a G slash C. If there's a push in the uh, S&P cash to go lower than the low today so far, which is 3,110.78, go down to 30, uh, 3,106. And then I think you have to consider this is a G and not a C. Alternative count. OK. Now, wait a minute. The E mini, ES, look at this, peak G slash C, but the monthly went to an all-time high because it happened overnight. It happened from the 1st of December. So, yeah, you've got a divergence, a discrepancy, a divergence between the cash and the futures. Doesn't happen very often because you look at monthly charts. Hey, wait a minute. What about the QQQ? The QQQ trading right now down 231 at 202.80, sitting right on the 14 period moving average, um, gone way below at 201.78 as the low today. Uh, but this one has not gone to a new high in December. But what a minute, wait a minute, the NQ hit 8457.25. 847.25, One point. So this one could make the peak C in the futures for the month. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, we don't have to get too carried away about that. We're still waiting to see the Magnes week. The stochastic's still good at 87%. And that nine period moving average refuses to cross over negative in the daily chart, so let's just keep that in mind. IWM, uh, IWM is the Russell 2000 down 1.17 at 160.61, uh, a break under the 159.30 area, especially 158.60.
and you, you you should see quite quite a bit lower prices. So this is a process. Now I had some very interesting uh, questions come up. One in particular. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, there it is. Questions. Uh, good morning, Basil. Topic at the at all time highs. Uh, let's see. Lay in. Uh, Want to know? I only want to know. There are a lot of. Um, it's a question. Are there any general rules for price movement after a new all-time high is made? So the, uh, there are a lot of all-time highs at the moment. He says both at index in indexes and equities. I have little knowledge of price movement after a new all-time high is made. If, if there is, uh, if there are typical moves or rules, etc., does price usually continue further up after a new all-time high? Does it usually surge further, or is it usually a very good shorting place uh, with stop just above? I'm searching for it. If there is something that usually happens after an all-time high is made, any typical strategies, long or short, after a new all-time high. Uh, may there be different several rules, etc. So a whole bunch of questions. So this is what I wanted to say. I think that's a that's a great question. What happens at all time highs? Well, the rule of thumb, if you know that I've every time we start to see new highs, I always say that because there's a clear sky ahead, we don't have any Overhead resistance, for instance, here, yeah, look, I'm showing you the IWM. 173.39 was the August 2018 all time high. Smashes down to 125.81, rebounds to the 100, and I should type that in. 163, I think it was. No, 162.91. 93? 93. 162.93. So let me type that in 162.93. Uh, 11.27. So that high that was made um, is under the previous high. So we now can look at to the left side, and either you've got it in, in the, the, the bigger time frame or shorter time frame, whatever it is, it's telling you, it's telling you that not white doesn't work here on a white background. Let's make it gray there. It's telling you that um, there's a long way to go to get to the, the left side high. But when you're already at all time highs, you have to use measurements A to B equals C to D, Fibonacci, uh, Garvey, as, as Larry Pazavento does. I did Larry's show this morning at 9 o'clock. I forgot to mention it to my subscribers because it all happened quite quickly. Um, so I, I did, did the show this morning. I was again going through other areas that I don't often do. So that might be of interest uh, for those of you. Oh, and incidentally, I'm just waiting to find out if tomorrow's um, meet up with the Investors Business Daily and the Boston Investors Group annual uh, potluck um, pre talk. Uh, Meter is going to be at MIT. Um, if it is, I'll, I'll let you know uh, because we've had a lot of snow. Today's not that bad, but they say t tonight could be quite bad going into early tomorrow morning. So they might have to reschedule that um, meetup that was scheduled at MIT. Let me just give you the exact information. Oh, am I going to do that? I'll do that just before we get to the break. There it is. So that'll be a Boston Investors Group and Boston IBD potluck holiday party and talk Tuesday, December the 3rd, 2019. 6.30 potluck reception and networking. 7.30 seeking investment opportunities for 2020 by Basil Chapman. MIT building E51 room 37670 Memorial Drive. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, the best way to use the TAS profile scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. Dow's down 200, SP's down 20. Wow, just a ton of questions over the last, uh, since uh, the holiday weekend. Um, let me go one at a time because I think we're going through impo very important aspects. Um, the question, Holly, about the... Um, about tops, when you've reached all-time highs, what should you do? Well, stocks that make all-time highs tend to be on the list. If you look at Investor Business Daily, um, I remember years and years and years ago, I used to go to get the Wall Street Journal, and I'd always I'd monitor and I'd write down the number of new highs, new lows, et cetera. Um, oh, I had so much information in this one, in one line on a two-page two uh, manuscript book. Um, but all I can say is that I, you've got to use other aspects to it so that if you're looking at the New York Stock Exchange, still hasn't made an all-time high, but now is really close. I think it will try to get there, and I think it will make it. And if you're looking at the monthly charts, you've got still a couple of months to go, or quite a few months to go before you get to Ds and things like um, the S&P, et cetera. So there's a whole bunch of things. So let me deal with that as we move along over the week. It'll be like a little bit of a lesson um, I'll try to have. Um, the next thing is, uh, the question is, that, uh, like a few people asked me about the TLC. So what I did is my in my, um, for my newsletter to my subscribers to my opening call, uh, every every weekend I show the um, triple yield. That's the let me see if I have I got it here. Oh, one, two, three, four. No, I don't. And let me go to it. And I show this chart and I discuss it. Uh, I just more or less show where it is, what it's doing, and what I'm thinking. So in this particular instance, white is the 30-year TYX yield. The brown is the TNX, that's the 10-year T-note yield. And the cyan one, the, the, the light blue one, is the five-year FVX yield. And look, yeah, it looks fantastic. I mean, bonds, I mean, yeah, bonds are down almost two points. But look, we're just stuck in a rate. It does look like there's going to be slightly higher prices. But at the same time, it also looks like it's kind of stuck in a range, 2.443. Um, was the high in the in the 30 year uh, four weeks ago, um, you know, and here it is 2.276. So it's just in the range. It sounds fantastic. So question is, uh, hi Basil, I am long TBT at 25. So let's go to TBT. TBT is the inverse of the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund. 
is trading at uh, 20, 25.76, up 70 cents, up 2.79%. But it's stuck in the range. If I had to draw that rectangle formation, or even a head and shoulders formation, I'd say 26.50 could get to 26.50. Goes above that, and that's really, really important. It's the speed with which all this is happening. But you've seen it before. Yields have had a lot of volatility uh, in range, not so much in, sorry, in single day-to-day -day range. But if you just look at it, it's been, look at this, here's the rectangle in the weekly chart. Lowercase h goes to lowercase m. So um, I'm long TBT at 25. I believe this will continue to go higher since TLT looks to be in a downtrend having broken the H pattern in November. Yep, yep, it did that, but it's, it's now holding with slightly higher highs, slightly uh, low lows, and goes on to say, please do an analysis and let me know your thoughts on staying long or adding to the position. Thank you for all you do for all of us. Alan, thank you. Alan, I appreciate that. Okay, so just remember, I, I look at the charts and uh, code in the den saying, Boons, uh, so huge jumping yields, Point, minus 0.27 in October, uh, they were point, uh, minus 0.72. Yeah, yeah, these are very big numbers on a short term, but look at the chart. The big thing about the chart is that the ultra-short Neiman 10 20-year went from almost 42 down to 23. So this is just a little bit of a bounce within that range. So uh, that's one side of it. The other is um, another one I got just a moment ago is um, Paul says, uh, I see you. Hey, Paul, just speak to the issue of what it is. Just forget about me. Don't, don't talk about me. Instead of saying, I see you have been avoiding the TLT again. I spent time with, when I did Larry's show this morning, I said, I, I, when I did the update, I said, we're going to discuss it. I have no problem. I have no fear. I have no nothing about bonds. I mean, I just do what I do. I see you've been avoiding the TLT again. You don't understand bonds. Bond lessons coming. Uh, listen, I've been talking about Zimbabwe and bonds for a long time, and I have said I don't think that's here now. It's not yet. Maybe later next year in 2020, we start to see something very different in the bonds because it's going to be an inflationary aspect, gold bonds. Uh, gold bond, oh, that's very good. Um, but, Paul, forget about me. It don't, don't, don't get pleased just because I'm, uh, if, I, if I make a mistake or whatever, it's got nothing to do with me. It has to do with an analysis. It has to do with the big picture. And the big picture says, have a look at this chart. You see this middle chart, the weekly? You come down sharply, you make an H pattern, and then you make an, another arch formation. That's called the H to M pattern in the Chapman Wave methodology. There we are. What happens next is going to be important. I'll make it simple. If TBT starts to trade above 27.32, you can't just sneak above, it's got to trade really into the 27.50 or 60 area. That's going to be a big deal because you've taken out the gap, you've done a whole bunch of things, and all of a sudden you've got higher highs and higher lows, the trend is changing. And until that happens, I'm looking at it as a trading range. I am looking at the yields the same way, I'm looking at the TBT the same way, I'm looking at the TLT the same way. When the levels break when the TLT right here actually takes out 134.45 the next time. That is a big deal because it's making lower lows, lower, lower highs in an H pattern that has another failure. That's the pattern that I always talk about in the, in the dreaded H. So keep an eye on that. It's not me, it's the bonds. Remember, just keep in mind the two separate things. I'm just a mere grain of sand. Bonds are the mountain. So keep that in mind. Um, so that's that. Next question I had was, oh, um, well, did I answer the question? Uh, uh, Sean wants to know about uh, a number of screens, a number of etc. I have three or four screens. I say all four because one I, I either put on, put off. But I have three screens on my main computer, and I have two laptops right now that are open. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five screens right now. I have had as many as seven. I'm actually going to try to whittle away because I don't think you need, I need them because I'm doing a show. I need to be able to see my engineer, what's going on. I need to see, oh, did I just mess that up? 
Can you see my engineer? My engineer right there, producer. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, I need to see that. I need to see emails that are a little slow on one machine and really good on the other. Um, there's a, just, I, I like to actually see the charts that I'm showing so that if something doesn't show up, I can immediately go to that and correct it. So yeah, um, I, that, that's my impression. My impression is that um, if you do your analysis, now I do trade very short term. So I like a completely separate screen or at least a separate at that particular as I'm, I'm on there so that I can see whatever is happening. So it really depends on what you do. But if, you, if you're really just doing it because you identify trends and you, you don't have to get carried away with too many screens. I, I, I'm trying to cut back. I'm not trying to add. I'm trying to see if I can whittle away and, and do everything I do in minimum rather than maximum. So I don't know if I've answered your question, but that's kind of how I'm looking at Dow's down 190, S&P's down 20. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators enhance the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yeah, so a, a question I got here is, uh, um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, question is, uh, uh, thanks, Basil. Reminder, will you take a look at KL on your show today? I have no position, nor am I especially interested in buying. I'm mostly just interested in learning to recognize the Chapman Wave price volume climax reversal where it appears. So we're looking at KL, which is Kirkland Lake Gold. This is the one that's been in investors' business daily forever. I mean, I hadn't even heard of it, and suddenly it shows up as like number two and number three, then the top 50. And it really, I think because of that, 
fund managers were buying when they wanted gold. I think they were going to the gold share. Uh, gold share. They went to Kirkland Lake Gold. So the darn thing. Look at this. Look at the look at the monthly chart. It, it crosses positive in the uh, nine period moving average back in June of 2017 at about somewhere between 743 and 962. So let's call it eight. Um, and it's still huge green, but it's gone to a peak D. Remember peak D? That's the Chapman Wave instant restart. Great technique. Goes A, B, C, D, a second D. This D uh, right here at the Chapman Wave two bar reversal, uh, 51.03 in August, 51.08 in September, uh, 51.08. Let me just type this in here. And then it takes a tumble. But it takes a tumble. Um, you and I would call it a tumble, but if you look at the the monthly chart, at this particular point, I still can't do anything other than change that to gray. There's no red. There's no, this is not a peak D top because the MACD is still positive and stochastic. It's still at 81%, but turning down. One balance volume is turning down. And look at this huge candle. I usually, with a candle like this, I spoke about it this morning. Oh, it was one of the commodities that exactly this candle, except it was green. I think. Uh, I'll, I'll try to find it just now. So I usually just outline and say you break above it, you go about 50, and that's positive, close above 50. Usually I say two out of three bars, but that's months. So let's just say for any weekly close about 50.25, 50 um, two weeks in a row will be really positive, and any break below 37.20, let's call it $37, says, uh-oh, it's going even low. I think it's more sideways. It gapped down. So uh, so um, uh, Kevin wants to know, um, right here, was that a Chapman Wave volume reversal? Well, the question applies to the 25th of November, where the volume was 9.4%. 9,498,000, or so let's call it 9.5 million, to the downside with a gap down. One day it's trading at 47.51. Uh, Next day, the high is uh, 42.64 and hits 39.11. So it must have been earnings or something like that. But the next day it has 5.0 million. That's not a Chapman Wave volume spike reversal. So you remember at the time I think I spoke about it, I said, no, I don't think so. And then we haven't looked at it for a few days. Well, the next day had a low volume and a lower price. So that negates that particular technique. The technique I was talking about is one that applied to now. This is service now, IT services. And it had a huge volume reversal on the 23rd of October. It's 213.99. It was trading at 276.50 just a week and a half before that. That's a whopper of a down down move, and it had one of the biggest spikes in volume. Now, it's also had a huge spike. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a volume reversal to the upside uh, on the 20th of November. It had a whopper, 37.9. It's called 38 million. So what I would said is that expect 28 sessions of up move, but we weren't going to buy it because I had other stocks that we, we looked at that were doing very nicely. Um, uh, they made a purchase and got dinged. Oh, oh, that must have been we were talking about. Uh, oh, we were talking about KL. Yeah. So that, that. So in other words, that one didn't apply to what I'm talking about. Now what we're looking at. Kirkland has gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, in 28 days, it could actually go on for 56 days. So I don't know if that's the case. We've made a peak C1, C2, C3 pullback here. Um, let's fo we'll follow this. This is one we're doing only theoretically. I would have said buy it, but the only reason I didn't, and I love it, service now, uh, IT services. I love the actual company, just a little bit I've read about it and what it's done technically. But we had others that we've, we've done nicely on. So that one I skipped. So... Um, CLVS, CLVS. I also want to look at this because I saw, oh, look, this is a Chapman Wave Screamer. Uh, what a what a beautiful one. We had this, uh, spoke about it, but we didn't buy it. Oh, 
Look at this leg. Every day from this leg right here in, in Clovis, Oncology Inc. Biotech, right here on the 20, I think I mentioned it somewhere around the 20, 20th, 23rd, it was in the sevens, maybe it touched eight. Um, and it's gone from eight to green candle, higher green candle, higher green candle, higher green candle, and today another candle, I don't know if it's going to be green, but it's another recovery high, up in the 17.37, it has doubled in price. This is what we call streamers, my Chapman Wave, um, in my opening call newsletter, um, we tend to uh, be looking at these. Some have worked. We, we, some have worked beautifully. We don't have, and some we've tried. Tried. I, I make it a one or a one and a, one one point thirty percent risk, but there's a three to five percent gain. It's a screamer. So anyway, uh, we'll see. Um, what did I have today? Um, um, yeah, I'm not going to waste time. Uh, let's see. Uh, going to um, questions, uh, that's, uh, that's that. And then there was a question here I had from Hector. And Hector, I just, why did I not put it in, uh, what you were asking about? Oh, I'll try to find it during the break. I, I, I remember I said I'd get to it. Oh, man, that's, that's silly. I wrote down your name, and then I forgot to put what it was. All right, I'll figure it out. Uh, and then I had a question earlier on when I was doing Larry's show about new call. This is a steel company, I believe it's a steel company, trading up 28 cents at 56.64 in a day when the Dow's down 23, 234, S&P's down 26. This is very nice action. And it has to do, I think, with must have been tariffs. Look, uh, U.S. Steel is up 47 cents at 13.59. Still doesn't look great. AK Steel is up. Uh, whoa, there's a screamer. 294, up 19 cents. Oh, missed it. AK Steel, very nice, big spike. Um, so, yes, new core, I think it's, it's looking really good. Um, I think it's a little choppy. Maggie's good. At, it's just cross positive again. Um, it's a 90 point, 90% in the stochastic and hopefully flattening. It mustn't pull back. And the MACD and stochastic in the weekly are very good, but it does have a little doji candle. And that weekly chart is, a uh, monthly chart is really not very good. So this is a situation where it's improving, and I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the, the fundamentals are improving, but I, I do suspect that that 200 period moving average at 55.74 in the weekly chart says it's going to go up and down and up and down for the next couple of, quite maybe four or five weeks before it can break into the 59, 60 area. So just keep an eye that this is acting well, wouldn't be surprised if it pulls back a little bit. It's in C in the weekly chart. And I got this as an alternate count in the daily. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average
average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, yes, yeah, so just a, a quick thing uh, going back to the TLT. Um, so, the big question for me, looking out, is is there going to be a Zimbabwe-type inflation where the Fed, when everything starts to pick up, or is there going to be a deflation? Deflation, many people think deflation is the worst thing where you cannot raise prices and, and, and profits just keep going lower and lower and lower. Um, but, you know, inflation is just a, it's not a good thing, inflation. Any of you remember the 1970s with inflation? You had to go to the post office to see if the stamps that you bought yesterday are the same price. It's just, it's not good. So, if with the world economies in this, in this situation, where everyone, now you've got, before you had maybe two countries, maybe three countries vying for your dollar on a particular good, but now you've got, uh, you've got India, you've got so many countries around the world that are wanting to buy, to, 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 for you to purchase their goods, that I, I think it has, at least for now, this, this is part of the deflation thing. On the other hand, when you look at, look at this, let's go to the RTH, the RTH, and I had a question about uh, the uh, consumers. So 120.98 was the uh, all-time, all-time Van Eck retail ETF, all-time high, wow, all-time high in retail. This is with Amazon. You got an all-time high at 120.98. I think it was around about the 17th or something of uh, 15th of November, right? 15th of November. Now, I love, the, I love this one because it happens to include, so what did I say it was? 15th. It happens to include Amazon. So I had a question, would I be, be kind enough to go through Amazon and some of the others and, and the, 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 the real big caps? So what we've got here with today's action down $1.13 at 118.88, it's just $2 off the all-time high. But look at this, this rectangle forming in the weekly chart. Look at the way the MACD is good but turning down. Stochastic's really good but turning down to 89%. On-balance volume made a high back here when it made that peak E top on the 15th week of the 15th, they did it together, um, and now it's pulling back. So I've got to be watching this. And the monthly chart is only in G slash C. I suspect I, mean, I should call it the C. Uh, why? why, why? Uh, oh, A, B, C. Yeah, that's, that, let me put that in so you know what I'm talking about. So, and the MACD and stochastic in the week, in the monthly chart are very good. So, it says to me that there could be a digestive phase right now. So the RTH is one thing, Van Eck Retail, but the XRT, look at this. Um, All-time high, 52.96 in August of 2018. It goes kaplop all the way down to the 37s. Uh, most recently, that was in August, I think it was. Rebounds all the way to the 45, right here, 40, 46, I think, 45. 45.41 on the 7th. 
So there's a big discrepancy, a big discrepancy between these. One is at an all-time, almost at an all-time high, um, and the other is seventh, and the other is um, faltering badly because it doesn't have Amazon. So three things, I, three points I wanted to make uh, here is one: if you go to, I certainly down the northeast, and I've been to a couple of cities in the northeast. But I'm really, at this point, I'll just talk about Boston. In the Boston area, the parking is prohibitive. You can't, you can't get parking um, in malls without taking a long walk. And that's even what's talking about the, the brick, brick and mortar places giving way to, the, um, to everything that's done online. But I think people like to go, they like to walk around, especially in cold weather. So other things are happening. And I think the true reflection is that you have to include Amazon. That's why I do want to do the RTH. But most importantly, there was a dreaded H formation right here, 44.06, no, 40, well, 45.41. How did I get that? 45.41. Someone's listening, probably saying you were listening to yourself. I wasn't. 45.41 on the 7th of November. And then it goes to a higher 45.23. So it's making an arch formation here. And the weekly chart is holding well with 43.60 to 43.30 as key, key moving average support. And the monthly chart going for a sneeze. The sneeze is coming. Uh, get ready, get ready. <laughs> so what we've got here in the monthly chart is we've got a single leg A that looks like it could make a peak A. And this is the holiday season. Isn't that interesting? Holiday season. And it's, it's faltering. The XRT, S&P Retail Spider. And, um, hey, that's, that's, that to me is a big deal. So here we go. Amazon. Amazon made, went to a peak D, that's what we we're looking for. It's only a peak C in the weekly chart, but this peak D says, be a little careful here, Amazon, because uh, you, you, you're meeting up with Target, Costco, Walmart, there's a lot of competition now. And the high of 1824.69 that was made on the 29th on Friday, we're now down at 17 uh, in the 1760s. That's a big move. And the weekly chart is failing in a, at leg C, uh, with a, an H pattern forming. So I'm saying to you that I think Amazon has have some tough numbers to come up with this year. 2035.80 was the all time high. And uh, yeah, 20, 2050.50 was the all time high in September of 2018. Plums to 13.07, round number low. Screams up to 2035.80 in July. And now it's back down to the 1700s, low 1700s. So just there's a problem. Uh, the next question was Goog. I'm going to Goog because it's alphabet. It made a peak E, F. It made a peak F in the Chapman Wave methodology right here um, at, in the 13 E, F. Now it's in a cell mode in the daily. Uh, and it's trading at 1284. It hit. Um, a recovery high, peak C in the weekly chart, but it made a double top, 1334.88, 1335.53, 13, like a chapter with two bar reversal, and, and a peak F, and now look at MACD's week, Stochastic's week, Price's week, dreaded H pattern failure on the left side so far today. Um, this, is, this is not good news. So I suspect that Google Alphabet has made a peak B in the monthly chart, you could have a good digester phase. I'm not doing a major crash. I'm just saying a digester phase. Uh, next question I had was, face, could I do Facebook? Yep, Facebook is trading um, peak A, B, C. There's a brand new leg D, a doji candle turnaround from Friday's high. Uh, let me do this quickly, A, B, C. Okay, and this is a leg C in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart is stuck. 218.62 was the all-time high in July. Uh, drops very sharply down to the 120s, springs back to the 204s, and here it is at 199. Um, it's holding pretty well. I, I, I like its action. It's, it could digest here, yeah, but it's holding well. Um, so I, those are the questions I had. The next question I had, and you know, I'm trying to find Hector. I can't find your question. Hector, if you don't mind, uh, send it to me again. I'll do it. Uh, tomorrow. Oops, we've got a break coming up, final break, and then we've got our final section, um, segment. 
I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 244, S&P's down 27. Um, it's one of the reasons why we went short uh, the Dow. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think we're in a digestive phase right now. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Admissions Hour. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're going to go to uh, just one second. Yeah, I think Roku has made a peak a G top in the daily. There's an arch formation. It's down to, uh, 23 at 137. I had a question about that. So let's go to uh, we got Scott in uh, Safety Harbor. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Do we have Scott? Do we have Scott? Do we have Scott? Um, maybe he's not there. Maybe he waited too long. Waited too long. All right, I'm sorry. Scott, I'm looking at X because I think I think that's what you wanted to talk about. It's having a nice day. Just be a little careful here. I don't see it as a fundamental turnaround yet. I think it's still stuck in the range. And it's up 37 cents at 13.49. So just be a little careful. I'm sorry, I didn't get you a call in time, but um, it's just the same thing. Just keep it as your trading vehicle. You're in and you're out. That's the way I see it right now. Uh, I had another question. Oh, about my uh, the uh, talk tomorrow night at the Boston Investors Group and the Investors Business Daily. This is the um, meetup, the potluck holiday party, December the 3rd, 6:30. Uh, is the potluck reception seven and networking and 7:30 is uh, where I, I'm the speaker seeking investment opportunities for 2020. Um, MIT building E51 room 376 70 Memorial Drive, Cambridge, Mass. I'm giving you this and you should RSVP. Go to their their page. Um, uh, just check out Boston Investors Group. But 
you will know whether we're going to meet or not because there's a big storm they say is coming tonight so we might have to postpone it for a week or two i don't know i'll let you know tomorrow but in the meantime that, that's the information you might need so the dow's down 231 uh yes we did uh, yes we did go short the dow uh again and uh i think that this is going to be a uh, really important moment because you, you know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the moving averages to cross negative, and so far they're not. So look for some kind of a balance each time, but lower highs and lower lows is kind of my theme for the moment. And yes, we've got one of the index that is not doing very well today. That's another one we're short. Those are any short positions. Our long positions have done very nicely. And actually, most of them are holding very well. Even Bank of America is actually up today. So that's our situation. And... Um, Steve Rhodes coming up, then Dave White, then Tom O'Brien. Have a wonderful day and check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And I uh, hope to see you uh, tomorrow at this time. Have a wonderful day.